I so should have put some uh, audio to that little graphic. Uh, <laughs> I am so excited to be here. Welcome back to those of you who have been watching all day. You are live in the launch for Leading From the Back, my new book. This one here, which I am super, super proud of. And I am so chuffed to pieces and I'm definitely using words that I know Caroline's going to laugh at. I'm so chuffed that Caroline Thompson is here um, for a bit of a chinwag this afternoon on all things braveness in business. Caroline, do you want to introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? I will. So my name is Caroline Thompson and I am the Brave Business Coach, helping women cut through the crap and be brave enough to be themselves. And so Caroline and I are business buddies. We are in a mastermind together. And she has transformed my life this year. She has made me be so brave with a bit of technology that I normally bloody well hate, which is voice notes. I have become the queen of voice notes. And before me and Caroline, I never did voice notes ever. So Caroline, tell me, what's the deal with voice notes? Why are they so important? <laughs> Because they're ace. Um, because why? There is nothing better than having Julie Creffield's southern amazingness in your voice notes. Like, let's be honest, we've got the north and the south covered. So, for me, with voice notes, it is the fact that they are so personal. Like, they haven't just been copied and pasted, and they're real life. And also, what's super important to me and especially this year is that it's connection yeah. it's yeah. not just seeing something through a screen yeah. it's actually hearing someone's voice and I have converted so many people like business buddies clients friends family I'm like I'm gonna do a voice note because you always do voice notes <laughs> I <laughs> love yes, it I do I love it. I love it. And you know what? For those of you that are watching this session, whether you're watching it live with us now or watching on the replay, my challenge to you is to be brave and to be bold and to say something in the damn comments. Like, come and say hello. Tell us who you are. Tell us about your business. And if something resonates in terms of what we talk about on the call, let us know. Like, this is all about engagement. Hey, Dipsy. Look, oh, another one of our gorgeous, gorgeous ladies. So here's the thing, right? Um, I have got my tissues at the ready because Caroline has been making me cry all morning. She sent me a message earlier on where she was crying down the phone. So <laughs> can you explain why you've been crying this morning? <laughs> oh, God, you're going to make me cry and I haven't got any tissues because Dipsy didn't send me any. <laughs> right, so I don't have tissues. Um, why was I crying? I was crying because I was reaching the end of your book and I wasn't just crying because it was over, although that was a little bit sad. But chapter seven, where you talk about your friend Bryony, was like an absolute punch in the gut. Because a huge part of the work that I do and the reason that I do it is because my mum died when I was eight. And having that reminder there in black and white that life is far too short to be holding back, playing small, not creating a legacy, whatever that might look like to us, just really, really got me. And then in your final chapter and in your acknowledgements, seeing so much of your truth and knowing that the way you have written it really is true to you and as has absolutely come from the heart like when you talk about rose and i was just like oh god i've got a, an afternoon of videos and interviews and i'm sat here crying how the hell am i gonna pull myself back but also knowing that crying is okay yeah yeah like <laughs> I love that you're a crier. Like, it's one of the things I remember about you. Like, I don't remember much about meeting you other than she was the one that cried. I didn't even know her name. And I was like, oh no, she's the girl from up north that cries a lot. And then, and, and the reason that I remember that is because my nickname amongst my friends and family is Tiny Tears. 
because I always bloody cry. I am forever crying. Like, it's not a family get together until Julie's cried. Like, that's my thing. I get emotional. I care deeply about things. And the way it, it comes out is through tears. Um, so I really respect your ability to be vulnerable and in allowing yourself to be seen, you know. Um, so, you know, thank you, thank you for modeling that because I think it's so important. And I love that you see me in the book and I love the feedback that you were like, I've got to tell you this stuff. And I worried, I really worried about writing some of the chapters that were emotive. And the chapter about Bryony, I sobbed through it. I literally sobbed while writing it. And I knew I had to speak that truth. I knew by leaving it out of the book, it would be doing the book a dis disservice because what happened to Bryony, and we've got Bryony coming on um, this afternoon, um, that changed everything for me at the beginning of the year. It just called me out on all of the bullshit reasons why mm. I thought I couldn't be successful as a business coach. And I know that you get it. You get it. And it's a daily battle. So it's not like you make the shift and then it's there forever. You've got to bloody do the work over and over again, right? Yeah. And, like, let's be honest. I know it's cheesy and cliche, but, like, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And it's not. It is a conscious decision almost constantly Am I going to show up today? Am I going to speak my truth today? Am I going to be brave enough to be me today? Yeah. Because we've spent years being told otherwise. And like throughout your book, you talk about like the careers teacher and things like that. It's like people constantly want to put us in a box. Yeah. And they, want, they want to put us in a box and minimize us. And mm. I really because of the work that I've done in plus size sport, I really feel, and I don't have any evidence to this, but I really feel like there are a lot of overweight women in the world because we are sick of being told to be small. I really mm -hmm. feel like it's a rebellious act. Like aside from the health stuff and the food stuff and the exercise stuff, I feel like it's a it's a double edged sword. In one way, in one way, it's about being invisible. So I think there's an element of being large to be invisible so that you're not noticed and that makes you safe. But I also mm -hmm. It's a bit of a fingers up to the world, you know, like stop trying to make me disappear, like allow me to be seen. It's this really weird thing. I don't know. Um, yeah. And I think there's a lot going on there with with size and almost like not we don't want to take up space because like we don't want to be seen as being the biggest woman in the room, for example. So we don't want to take up space. So we keep everything about us small, our voice, our power, like we we we're afraid to take up space yeah, yeah and I feel it I wrote about it in the book I feel it sometimes when when I'm on fire when I'm in flow when I'm confident sometimes I'll show up in such a vibrant way that I feel like I'm outshining people and then the empath in me goes oh Julie no too much too much you're going to make mm. people shit you know and it's all about the circles of people you hang with right and so it's it's not about like it's not about hierarchy or ego or any of those things, but we should be able to be our full self, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, and yeah. we're not. So yeah. many people, women especially, but so many people are not yeah. fully yeah. themselves. It's yeah. harder in a way. And so the work you do as a business coach, helping people to be more visible like you lead by example and like some of the photos you've done, some of the TikTok videos you've done. Speak to me about getting naked on the beach. Come on, let's, <laughs> let's get to the crux of what I want this conversation to be about. <laughs> you didn't warn me about that. <laughs> Why did you get naked? <laughs> it still makes me feel sick. So it is around that being seen and allowing all of us to be seen and for me like I stopped singing and dancing well singing at a really young age like age 10 11 it wasn't safe for me to sing anymore and with dancing sort of like when I left school that was it I left it behind so they were massive things for me to conquer because if you're singing and dancing you're almost asking people to look at you so they were big things. So I joined a choir, sang on stage, sang on Facebook. I don't think I did it live, but it's on my Facebook page. Danced on TikTok. And I was like, 
But all of these things were still relatively safe. Like they made me feel sick. But when I was singing, I was in a crowd. When I was on TikTok, it was pre-recorded. And like it could take me two hours to record a 30 second TikTok. But when you can't hide is when you're naked. Like there's nowhere to hide. So when we were on an online virtual retreat, I kind of had this think that one of the things that is still holding me back is not allowing my body to be seen, not acknowledging the lumps and bumps and everything that makes up me, part of me. So in the lunch break, I was at my sister's house and I was like, please do you come and take pictures of me naked on the beach? I think what's more worrying is she didn't even question it. So on Halloween, so like, it was amazing. October the 31st in Blackpool on the beach. I, I wasn't completely naked. I kept my knickers on, but I was practically naked yeah. to to embrace more of who I am. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I remember coming back from lunch and going, oh, my days. And then I was like, I want to do it. I was like, I want to. And obviously, I was, I was in Greece, so I had, like, sunshine. I was like, I want to do it. If I had somebody to photograph me, I would have done it as well because I was so inspired, you know, and I, I could sense the, the relief. Like, you turned up to that afternoon session a different person, you know, mm -hmm. and that is what being brave is about. It's about, you know, that allowing yourself to be vulnerable and going, nobody died. I'm okay. I'm okay with being judged. I'm okay with being seen. Yeah. And when you, one of your interviews earlier that you did, when you read out the fear, like, poem thing, and you said, like, at the end, like, something like, fuck it, I didn't die. And it's like, yes, like, that's where I'm at. And doing these things is so liberating. Yeah. And also, you've said the word vulnerable a few times now. So even though it doesn't actually flow in this conversation, I'm going to tell you, I did the quiz. I did the quiz. And like, the main thing it says is like, I'm like a vulnerable leader. It's like, is Julie actually sat there like typing up the answers? Is she like, this is Caroline. Let us tell Caroline how vulnerable she is, just in case she doesn't know that she's not afraid I'm of being so vulnerable. That the quiz is working. So I've been working on this quiz for about a month now, and I'm working with a digital agency that are helping me to do it. And originally I wanted people to be able to get um, kind of an assessment of what archetype they were. But it would have required something like, I don't even understand the language, but like 10,000 versions of the algorithm to be able to, it was just too complicated. So what we went for was the themes. So, you know, when you are the healer, the mother, you know, there are certain tendencies and vulnerability is one of them. But what was really interesting, when you get your report from the quiz, you've got like disruption, you know, who doesn't want to be disruptive? You've got like profile. Yeah, we all want a big profile. And then you've got vulnerability. And I couldn't find a word other than vulnerable because that's what it's about. But there's such negative connotations to the word vulnerability. Like it's a negative. Yeah. And I, so that was my highest score. Like, I want to bring it up, I can't, because I'll just get distracted. Um, but, like, the shape, like, yeah. my vulnerable was, like, over here somewhere, and the rest were kind of uh, in the middle-ish. Um, oh, but vulnerable was a massive spike. And I was like, yeah. for me, whereas up until recently, I would have seen that as a weakness. Yeah. But now yeah. it's part of my brand. It, I'd have been disappointed. Like if I hadn't have got the vulnerable bit, I'd have been like, "Shit!" I sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Um, I am not. I'm not living my truth. If I'm if that didn't come up, so for me it was a massive compliment, and I did love the quiz. Yeah, good, good, good. We've had about thirty people fill it out today, so I'm super, super excited by that um, because I just think there isn't just one way to be in business. And it can be a real pressure when you see people who are great at being them and you think, oh, do I have to be more like them to get the success that I want? And it's so easy to come away from your authenticity and away from your alignment because you also desire success. And then you have the guilt and shame of wanting that success. It's a real mixed up, weird place to be, right? Yeah. And it can, if, you, if you're not brave enough and 
oh, I can't remember now if this is in your book or in one of your conversations earlier. Um, I feel like I've been very like julified today. Um, somewhere at some point you have said about like it's in the book, there is no effing blueprint. Like, and it can take it can take a lot of courage if you're working with a coach. And I think this came up with Dipsy before, actually. Like if you're working with a coach, but you don't want to do things that way. Yeah. Especially in a group program, especially in a tribe. Yeah. It can take a lot to go, actually, nah, I don't want like to work with people one to one. I don't want a free Facebook group. Yeah. It's not me. Yeah. yeah. And then you start to think there's something wrong with you because you think everyone else. Yeah has a free Facebook group or goes yeah. naked on Blackpool Beach. Like And you and we know that the bravest thing you can do is just show up as yourself. I mean that's in its simplicity. And so often it's why on my mug, which has got old tea in it, <laughs> um, visible, vulnerable, valuable, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we get away from the tactics, and I know you know all this stuff, it's what you teach your clients too. They all want to know the tactics, like how does social media work and what does the algorithm do and what, how many posts does they? And they get so bogged down in the minutia of what they should be doing, like how do I do this right? When actually the three things they're not doing is being visible, allowing themselves to be vulnerable, and they're not creating enough value for their followers, right? Yeah. We started with that even if they weren't consistent, even if they didn't know the algorithms, even if they didn't know what the best way of doing it was, they'd get more progress. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah. And I love your three Vs. And like, whenever you come up with anything, I'm like, Shit, why, didn't, why didn't I come up with that first? <laughs> because we are not, even though we've got so much in common, we are not the same people and our strengths lie, lie elsewhere. But it's great to be able to acknowledge and recognize. And you're such a great cheerleader. You're like, oh, my God, your ideas are genius. And I'm like, yeah, because when I did the Clifton Strengths Finder, ideas was number one. So, of course, my ideas are going to be genius, you know. And if yeah. you were to do that test, something else would probably come up number one or whatever. But, I mean, you're it's great. One of the strengths. <laughs> Possibly, I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, but possibly, but it's like this DNA of who you are. And the minute I did that test, it's like I knew these things about myself, but having it written down on paper somehow validated it. So, you know, one of mine was um, futurist. Now, I'm not a futurist in terms of technology and stuff like that, but a lot of my stuff does tend to be above, like um, ahead of trends, you know, like so I can predict what is going to be, you know, topical next spring and stuff like that. It's just a natural gut instinct. But without that test, I wouldn't have been able to really nail what that was, if that makes sense. Yeah. So in terms of this year and, like, your tribe and how you've grown your tribe, what have you found to be the biggest challenges? I think for me, okay. it's got echoey. Um, one of the challenges with groups this year I've seen, and I've seen it at all different levels, groups that I'm part of and groups, my groups, is that the collective energy has been quite tough. Yeah. Like when we've been anticipating another announcement, everyone goes into like panic, panic mode. Yeah. And it's really easy to allow yourself to be sucked into that and to then if you're not hanging around in the right places, it can be really hard to get yourself out of it. Like if everywhere's doom and gloom and no one's looking at things differently or encouraging you to explore things differently, it can be really, really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, this has definitely been my experience as well. It's like, I feel like a right bitch talking about my success this year. Mm -hmm. But I also know it's really important that I do talk about success not just for my own purposes, but for people to know that it is possible and that it isn't doom and gloom. And in every crisis, there will be people that come out of it okay. Have yeah. you found that to be the case? Yeah, and it's it kind of echoes other things that have happened in my life as well. Like I had an amazing first birth experience. It was truly, truly magical. And I remember going to mother and baby groups and being like, everyone will start talking about the birth story. And I'm like... <gasps> don't know if I can share mine because yours have all been really bad and I don't want you to hate me for having a positive experience. Yeah. And it's a similar kind of thing. Like my turnover has doubled this year and I'm really proud of it. 
And luckily, look, where the flapping seals. <laughs> luckily, I have chosen to put myself in circles, masterminds, group programs, tribes that are really supportive of that. And that even if they are having a not so good month, yeah. we recognize that we're all human and that we will all have peaks and troughs and that whatever we are feeling is okay. Yeah. It is interesting because like we know that what we engage with, even like on an algorithm basis, right? So like my sister, she might be watching this, will say stuff like, oh, did you see that fight? Like, or did you see that robbery? Or did you, like all stuff like, like the local area? And I'm like, no, because that stuff doesn't show up on my feed, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and But it's the same when you're in a circle of people. Like it's so easy to get dragged into other people's dramas. And like, you know, when people are like, oh, you know, my boyfriend's an idiot. And then all of a sudden you start to pick holes in your own boyfriend, even though before he was brilliant. Like, it's like, we, it's like we want to feel connected. And so sometimes we change our experiences because the connection is more important than our own goals, if that makes sense. So we, we like, I don't know, we stop the progress or whatever. So what's, what's, uh, what's the next step for you in terms of, um, in terms of building your tribe and I mean what else is there to do in terms of your bravery like what do you need to do next oh, I don't know but whatever it is makes me feel physically sick and I can feel all the tension here and I'm like oh god what's it gonna be it's gonna be scary it's gonna be big it's gonna be brave and it'll be expansive like whenever I know that feeling isn't one of dread like it is a feeling of excitement um what does it look like at the moment i don't know and some of this like so some of this some ideas i had at the beginning of the year have been halted because of lockdown because of what we've experienced this year so hopefully some of those will come to the fore and will get done um and then in terms of my business and growing my tribe, it's a huge chunk of it is about building that audience. Like it sounds really simple, but it is about what else can I do? Because one of the questions on your quiz is like something about how visible are you? And it was like, I'm great where I feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, even though I talk about being brave and I will give anything a go, I'd noticed that my kind of patterns yeah. are to retreat back to my Facebook group where it's really, really safe. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll go out into the world and then I'll come back again. Yeah. And so when you um, read the book and you looked at the 12 archetypes, which of them stood out for you in terms of your kind of, you know, the status quo of where you tend to play? Now you're asking. I should have put them off. Um, <laughs> you, need, you didn't do your homework? <laughs> I obviously didn't revise enough. I didn't know this was going to be one of the questions. Um, oh. I think in the past, my default would have been mother. Yeah. But I think becoming a coach and doing my coach training and kind of all of everything that's come with that, I've moved slightly away yeah. from that one. Um, I do think facilitator, I think is quite prominent. Um, Crusader. Crusader. I mean, that's the one I, w I would love to see you dial that up. Mm. Because it's very difficult to crusade just within one group. Yes. You have to crusade outside of your group. Otherwise, you'd just be like repeating yourself over and over again to the same people that are already on board with you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I've seen like the back end of this year as I've gone braver with audiences and started doing guest masterclasses for other people, going on other people's podcasts. I started to see more of that, but I do feel very much like a woman on a mission. Yeah. Like this yeah. is what it's about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Crusader, Facilitator, I feel like there was another one, but I can't remember what they all are. Cool, no worries. And so as the person, I think the only person that actually cried in a DM, other people did emojis and, and little giffies to say they were crying. You actually cried in my ear hole. Um, why should people buy this book? Oh, why should they buy the book? Because 
It's awesome. It's written from the heart. It is very much a kick up the ass, like, but absolutely done with love. Like it is like someone's holding your hand, giving you a hug and kicking you up the bum at the same time. Um, even without doing the exercises, because as we've established, I'm not very good at doing my homework. Um, even without doing the exercises, I feel like I learned a lot about myself. And that comes from someone who has already done shed loads of personal development. But I think there's something there about seeing it in black and white. And when you record the audible, like there's definitely something there about hearing it in your voice. Yeah. Like I'm lucky in that I know you, so I can hear you as I'm as you as I'm reading it. Um but yeah, from the very first, like the opening bit of eight and a half year old Julie, who is waiting to shine, to going all the way through to the end, where it's like shine bright like a diamond. Like it's just such such an inspirational message and story. Thank you. And so my final question is, when are you going to write your book? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was supposed to be this year. Yeah. That didn't happen, did it? Um, maybe we'll do it next year. Yeah. Maybe I'll be brave enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love what you do. I love you. I love the fact that we are um, voice note buddies now. Like life, I, you know, if I go a week without a voice message from Caroline, I'm like, you know, my life is not worth living anymore. Thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you for modeling vulnerability so beautifully. Um, I'm just so glad that I come across you. I'm just really glad that we're in each other's lives. I am. I am. I am really grateful. And I'm also quite pleased that we haven't cried. Yeah, I know. I didn't even need the tissues. Didn't I know. Even need the tissues. So I'm going to close up. We've got um, coming up at, uh, gosh, in four minutes time. That went quick. We have the wonderful Jill Piddington, who is going to be talking about discovering true self through the power of tribe building. If you haven't downloaded the book, what are you waiting for? Go download the book. And if you haven't tried out the tribe quiz, now is the time because then you can kind of really get a sense of what it is we are talking about. I will see you, Caroline, at some point. I'm sure you'll be in my voice notes this evening. Um, <laughs> and everybody else, I will see you in a few, mo few moments. <laughs> All right, ciao. Thank you.